Please welcome John Evans. <clears throat> Thanks everyone. So today I want to talk to you about uh, database libraries in KiCad and uh, why you might want to consider trying them out. So first, to do that, I need to talk about libraries in general. So what's, what's wrong with libraries? Uh, some of the issues with traditional KiCad libraries, some of the motivations that you might consider a database library. So I want to start off by saying there are many different workflows to use KiCad. There's not one right answer here. So for the rest of my talk, uh, if you see something and you think, uh, why would I do it that way? Uh, I already have a different way. It works great for me. I understand you, OK? It's, it's fine. You're not wrong. There's 20 or 30 different right answers here. I'm going to discuss one particular way that you can do libraries. And maybe it works for you. Maybe a different way works for you. But if you see something here that seems interesting, give it a try. See, see what you think. So what are libraries for anyway? Why do we have them, right? So if you strip away all of the uh, complexity, the foundation of libraries is that you need some way of creating these symbols and footprints and placing them on your schematic in your board. It would be pretty bad if you had to draw them by hand each time. Uh, you know, you don't want to draw the resistor. So you can create a library of symbols, library of footprints, and, and you can put them down. But these symbols and footprints most of the time are not independent, right? When you are making a physical PCB, you're buying certain parts, uh, you know, maybe from DigiKey. Uh, you, you, uh, your components are represented by, uh, you know, a symbol and a footprint and also other information. You know, we want to keep track of uh, which components we're buying. Uh, sometimes uh, when you're working on a team or at a company, you need to keep track of an internal part number. Uh, some some uh, personal hobbyists do this too because they have too much time on their hands. Um, and so these are some reasons why uh, when you start thinking about parts or components, uh, it's, it's more than just the graphics. And in KiCad, this is uh, traditionally done by adding information to the symbol in the form of fields. So you get some built-in fields in KiCad. You can uh, specify things like a value and a description. Um, and then you can add custom fields. You can store any data you want in there. And uh, you can show it on the schematic, or you can also just keep it inside the symbol and export it. And this works pretty well. Like, uh, you have a symbol here for uh, STM32. If you want to use this in multiple different schematics, you just add it to a symbol library. Uh, you set the custom fields in that library. And now you've got them in every design, right? Everybody knows this, basic stuff. But what about these ones, right? These uh, resistors and capacitors. Unlike the microcontroller we just looked at, these symbols could map to any number of real world components. I mean, even if you decide, OK, I need a 0402 surface mount resistor, uh, 10 kilo ohms, uh, go on DigiKey and look at that. How many parts are there? I mean, there's going to be thousands of them. Uh, so if you are the kind of person who needs to keep track of which specific line you're going to be ordering, how do you do that? So KiCad's built-in libraries take the reasonable stance that if you have this part, uh, they can't possibly know which one you're going to buy. So instead, it's just a symbol. It's just a graphic. It doesn't have any footprint. It doesn't have any part numbers. And if you create a schematic with this symbol and you want to create a complete BOM for that schematic, uh, you basically have two options with the standard KiCad libraries. Now, the first option is to add all of this information in each schematic. Symbol by symbol. You know, you can do this in a few different ways. There are tools like the symbol fields uh, table that make it easier, where you can open up a, a grid and, and see everything. Uh, but you still have to do it every time. So you have to go through and say, for all of the uh, dozens or hundreds of resistors in this design, uh, which part number I'm going to take? Uh, which footprint is this actually? Um, it's time consuming. It's error prone. You can uh, make a typo. Um, you can make a mistake on a part number, and you've already copied that to resistor to uh, 20 other places in your schematic, and then you have to remember to fix it 20 times. And uh, then if you, uh, you know, take one of these resistors and you say, OK, I've bought a reel of 5,000 of these. I want to use them. Uh, other designs, you have to remember, OK, go to this uh, other design, copy that resistor, paste it in, uh, then, you, then you get the right part. Uh, it's a lot to keep track of. The other option is you can create a custom library. And you can create uh, resistor symbols for each resistor that you're going to use. 
Uh, some people call this uh, atomic libraries. This solves some of the pain um, because if you uh, set up the fields in the library, then you can make use of KiCad's library tools. So if you change it in the library, you can go uh, update symbols from library action and uh, just get any new data that you want. Uh, but what if you decided that you wanted to change the graphics, right? What if you decide, okay, I don't like this, uh, this square box resistor, I want the, the squiggly resistor instead. Uh, and well, now you're, you're still in trouble because you have to go through, uh, maybe you've made uh, dozens or hundreds of different uh, copies of this in your symbol library. Um, is there a better way? Well, now there is. It's called database libraries. So what does this do anyway? Database libraries solve this problem by separating the data about your components from the graphics, the symbols and the footprints. So instead of storing all of the important information about what is a part in the symbol, instead you store it externally in a database. And the way this works in practice with KiCad is that when you are browsing a database library in the symbol chooser, it's actually dynamically generating those symbols by taking information from a database about what symbol should appear here, what footprint should appear here, and what are all of the properties and fields. And it creates that symbol for you with a link back to the database. So when you place this symbol in your schematic, it looks like any other normal KiCad symbol. It works the same way, but it maintains its link to the database. So then any time you change the database, you can do update symbols from libraries the same way you do with a normal library, and you can get that new information pulled in, including changing which uh, graphical symbol you're pointing to. So you might ask, how does this actually work in practice? How do you implement a database library? Uh, by the way, I'm going to be switching operating systems in my screenshots everywhere. Uh, you know, I love that KiCad works all over the place. I, I like to test it on, on uh, numerous different operating systems. So you can see I've added a library to my uh, symbol library table here, and it has the uh, file extension uh, KiCad DBL, which uh, might be a little bit hard to see on the screen, but it's there. This is the database format, so it shows up uh, as a different library format than the rest of the libraries. When you're adding this database library to your library table, remember, it's not actually storing the graphics. It's only storing the data about those components. So we still need other regular KiCad symbol libraries, and the database library will refer to them. So instead of actually storing the graphics in the database, you just store a library link the same way that a symbol stores a library link to its footprint. So if you wanted to set this up and then only see your database symbols in your symbol chooser and not uh, have to scroll through these libraries that just have uh, normal KiCad symbols, um, you can hide them here, so you can keep them active, but there is this uh, visible checkbox on the left. You can uncheck it, and what that does is it keeps the library loaded, but it just hides it from your symbol chooser, because you can say, I want this library to be available in case I want to uh, update from it, or in case a database is going to refer to it, but I don't want to see it in my, in my symbol chooser, because I don't want to have uh, so many things to scroll through. Okay, so what is, what is this KiCad DBL file? How do you make one? Uh, well, it's just a text file. It's, a, it's in a format called JSON. Right now, you do need to edit them in a text file. There's, there's not a UI for this, but don't get scared. Uh, you don't need to know how programming works. Um, don't be intimidated. Uh, there's a lot of samples out there. I'm going to sort of talk through at a high level how it works, uh, but my recommendation for if you actually want to try this out is go check out uh, some of the threads on the uh, KiCad Info forum. Uh, where there are some people who have set up uh, production database libraries that have just shared their whole process. They have shared their config file, and they've asked questions about how to do it. Um, so you can find those threads, see if it answers your questions. Uh, check the manual. It actually is documented in the manual, unlike some of the older features of KiCad. And if anything is unclear or, uh, or could be improved, uh, we, we really would appreciate feedback on that. Um, Maybe at one point we'll make a UI editor for this if there's enough demand for it. Uh, but at the moment, what we're seeing is that uh, you know, people are able to get up and running with just the text file. So we're going to look at some parts of this file. Right now I'm just showing you the top part of a, a sample file. Uh, let's look at this source section first. So I need to introduce 
ODBC, if you've not heard of it. Uh, this is uh, Open Database Connectivity. It's a, a standard API for talking to databases. It was created by Microsoft, but it's now used by a lot of different tools. It's cross-platform. It's, uh, it's available on your operating system. What this means is that any program that wants to talk to a database can choose to use ODBC, and then that program can talk to the database without having to know the details of what that database software is. Uh, it just talks to an adapter that does the translation. So if you're using MySQL or, or SQLite or, or uh, any other database server, um, KiCad doesn't need to know about that. KiCad just uses ODBC. Um, and, and this way, you can uh, connect to different kinds of databases. And all that is needed is that you have uh, a driver for your operating system. And every major operating system supports every major database, as far as I can tell. I've, I've tried a number of them. Um, so there are two ways you can tell an application like KiCad how to talk to a, a data source, which is uh, how ODBC refers to uh, the connection. So the first way is to put all the information needed into a single piece of text called a connection string. And this is basically just a bunch of parameters separated by a semicolon. Um, so in this example, the first parameter says to use a driver called SQLite 3. And all of the other parameters, in this case only one, are, are passed directly to that driver. So that means that you might have some specific parameters for your specific database to look up. Um, but don't worry, this is a problem that a lot of people have to solve for a lot of tools. So there is a lot of information out there. In fact, there's a website called connectionstrings.com. Go figure. Uh, you can just go there and select which database you're using, and it'll just show you samples of, uh, of how you can figure out how to write a connection string. Um, and the, the second way is to configure something called a data source name, or DSN. I'm not going to dive into too much detail on this because uh, how to do this is different on Windows versus Linux. Um, but basically, this is a mechanism where instead of putting all of that configuration into a single line of text, you configure it somewhere else, in, you know, maybe in some UI, maybe in a configuration file. And then there is some uh, ODBC manager living somewhere on your operating system that is actually managing the details of making that database connection. And you just give that connection a name. And all KiCad needs to know is that name. And it, and it says, I want to connect to this named ODBC connection. And it just sort of magically works. Uh, one reason to do this is that you can create a single data source and then give that to multiple applications. So you, you have a database um, that is used for ERP or some other systems. Uh, you can connect KiCad to that, but you can also connect other tools all using the same DSN. Uh, and you can update the parameters without having to change your KiCad configuration. And it also means you can avoid exposing all this information and details to KiCad. So if you need some uh, username and password for connecting to the database, uh, maybe you don't want to include that in your KiCad configuration because you want to share that publicly. So you can just refer to it by a DSN and then uh, hide that configuration and, and set it up on each machine. So I want to take a moment and talk about schema. Uh, so without getting too precise and technical, this word basically is uh, it's a description of what kind of data is stored in a database. Um, I'm talking about one common type of database. There are many things that people mean when they use the word database. I'm talking about a, you know, a relational database that has tables with rows and columns. And so when I talk about schema, I'm talking about you know, which tables exist uh, what columns are in those tables? What kind of data do these columns store? Um, so, so some columns may store text. Others may store a number. Um, you can usually get away with treating everything as text, uh, but most databases give you the option of uh, storing some data in various different numeric formats or dates, uh, depending on what your needs are. So say we have a, a single table called resistors in our database. And in, in this example, uh, this table has six columns. So when you start filling out this table, each row is representing a specific resistor with all its properties. And when you create a table in this kind of database, you can normally specify one or more of these columns to be keys. And what this means, a little bit hand wavy, is that it's going to be easy to look up rows using the value in the key column. Uh, you can also do things like enforce that a key must be unique which is important for establishing the link with KiCad. Uh, KiCad needs a way of definitely knowing 
when you uh, are talking about one specific part by some identifier, that that's one specific entry in the database, that there's no confusion. So you need some kind of unique key. Um, and here I'm using this part number column, but what you use as your key is uh, totally up to you. It just has to be something unique. Um, so if I wanna look up what footprint this Panasonic resistor has, uh, I just need to look by the key res002, and then the database will give me back that row with all the data in it. Um, you don't have to create one table per type of part. Uh, one reason you might want to do that though is because you can have uh, different columns in different tables. And so you can see uh, here, like all of these columns are pretty generic, right? Like I could have just called this table parts instead of resistors. But I could have a bunch of more uh, columns in this table like resistance tolerance or power rating that don't make sense to share between different uh, types of parts. So one way you can set up your library if you want is to have different tables that have different columns and use that to distinguish between what kind of data you're going to store and what kind of data you're going to bring in and put on your KiCad symbols. So let's go back to that text file. Uh, below the source configuration that we talked about earlier, there's a libraries section. So a single database library file can optionally represent multiple different libraries in the symbol chooser. And uh, this is going back to what I just said, a way of handling multiple tables. If you want, you can present uh, two different tables as two different libraries. So you can have a capacitors library and a resistors library, and they both are coming from the same database, but they have different columns. Uh, you know, maybe you want to have the dielectric and the capacitors. So you, uh, you create them as two different libraries, and they can have different sets of data. So you, here you can see what each of these items mean. Uh, we're gonna come back to the fields section in a moment. But basically, each of these uh, text fields, a key, description, symbols, footprints, it's just naming a column in that table. So what we're seeing here is that uh, if we want to identify a part in this library that we're calling resistors, that it's going to look in a column called part number to find that unique key. And then there's the properties section at the bottom, and this holds some of the things that are built into KiCad, like the description, the keywords, and the flags, like should this be uh, excluded from the bomb and things like this. Um, you can map those to a database column too. So you can actually uh, you know, store these flags in your database and have them automatically set when you place the symbol. So let's look at the field section now. This is where you can add any number of arbitrary fields from the database to your part. So when you look at that row in the database table, uh, KiCad isn't going to just automatically bring in all of that data. Uh, you can control how it's brought in. So if we look at this MPN, you can see in this example, I have column MPN, name MPN, but they don't have to be the same. That name is what's going to appear in KiCad, so I can have a column MPN and a name manufacturer part number spelled out if I wanted to. And then there's some other flags like uh, should this field be shown on the schematic by default and should the column be shown in the symbol chooser and should the name be shown. Um, the show name is useful. That's one of the new features that was added in version seven. Um, you can uh, turn on this checkbox and then instead of just seeing the value of the field on the schematic, you see name colon value, which is uh, useful if your value is just a, a number or something. Um, and, and it makes sense to have that context. All right, we made it through the text editor. You can all breathe easy. So if you go through, uh, you set up your database this way, you can proceed to add it to KiCad and use it. So you can open up the symbol library table, get back to where we started, uh, and, and choose your KiCad DBL file that you created. Um, here I've added a, a sample, so there's actually a, a, a QA database library that is part of the KiCad source code, so you don't even have to make one, you can just grab that and use it. Uh, it uses a database called SQLite that, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, stores its data in a file on disk, so there, the whole database is, is there in the source code, and you can uh, use this for testing if you just want to play around and don't need to create anything. So when I open the symbol chooser, I will see that this database has uh, two libraries inside it, capacitors and resistors, and I can uh, browse these, and they come with all the properties and the footprints already assigned. 
Uh, one more neat thing that is new, though, is uh, I can right-click the column headers at the top of the symbol chooser and pick select columns. And this will open up a window where I can enable any of the custom fields that I configured here. So you can see I, I can add or remove these. I can reorder them. And then uh, you can get your symbol chooser where you can uh, browse by some other parameter. And if you have a column shown here, it also works for the search. So uh, you no longer have to deal with uh, putting things in keywords or, or uh, putting a description in like you used to. You can just search by whatever uh, data you actually care about in your database. And like I said, uh, once you place this part, it has a link back to the database. Anytime the data changes, you can just do update symbols from libraries and get new data. So you might be asking, OK, well, how do you actually uh, get the data? So KiCad itself doesn't have a mechanism for editing a database at this point, and I'm not sure that it ever will. Kind of the, the way the database libraries feature works is that KiCad is a consumer of data, and the assumption is that your data is coming from somewhere that is, that is managed outside of KiCad. So if you're building a new database library from scratch, you'll need some kind of tool to create and modify the data. Um, here I'm so showing an open source tool called dBeaver, which is one option for using a graphical interface to create and manage databases. But there's a lot of options out there. Some of them are web applications. Some of them are desktop applications. Uh, if you're hardcore, you can just hand code SQL statements in your command line. Um, and uh, what this means is that like, if you're just using database libraries with KiCad, you can kind of pick anything. But if you're um, doing what uh, some people do, including me, and integrate KiCad with an existing database that talks to other tools, uh, you probably already have some way of managing this database. And you just need to add the information about which uh, KiCad footprints and symbols you're trying to use. And then it just works. So that's kind of the state of database libraries today. But uh, this is a new feature for v7. And it's kind of, a, as you can see, it's an involved feature. You have to kind of commit to spending a little time setting it up and playing with it. And I think as more people start to use this with different workflows, we're going to see other useful things both built into KiCad and as third-party tools. Um, so some of the things that I'm looking out for, um, you know, already in V8, you can specify multiple different footprint variants um, in, in your database column. And those will appear in the dropdown in the symbol chooser. So um, in, instead of having to use footprint filters where you put in a wild card like you can today, you can just explicitly say, like, this footprint can be one of these two choices, and then you get those two choices in the drop down. Um, we also uh, recently added support for Altium symbol libraries. We already had support for Altium footprint libraries. And what this means is that there's a really neat trick for any shops that are using both Altium and KiCad. Um, you can create a KiCad version of your Altium database library and then just directly use all of the content that you're already using in Altium and KiCad. Symbols, footprints, and data will come in. You don't have to do any translation. And it's really awesome if you want to uh, support both of those tools or do an easy migration uh, to KiCad. Uh, we have a contributor, uh, Andre Yours from the community, is working on a REST API library feature, which is uh, uh, something that works a lot like database libraries uh, in terms of the user experience in that it is uh, separating the graphics of the symbol and of the footprint from the data, but it's just a approaching it in a different way, where instead of talking to a, a SQL database, you talk to some kind of web server. And so this is going to be an exciting feature. Um, it's uh, being reviewed right now, and, and uh, maybe we'll be in for V8, maybe we'll be in for V9. Um, but this feature will sort of enable people in the community who are working on web tooling around KiCad to uh, build kind of web-based uh, library servers, which is really exciting. Um, I also was uh, you know, browsing, uh, I think it was the KiCad Reddit, and I saw a, a project called Key365, which builds upon database libraries and gives you a, a web app front end and various other features. I haven't actually installed this and tried it, but the screenshots look really cool. It's neat seeing what people are doing with this, and I expect to see other community projects uh, coming soon that are going to uh, continue to add different workflow options for managing libraries in KiCad. One of the things that I heard when I first came to KiCad from the commercial world and, and well, it was seeing sort of the user sentiment is like, KiCad's pretty good, but uh, the library management, it sucks. Like, uh, this is always a complaint. So I, I think it no longer sucks. I think it's actually uh, pretty good. And I think it's, it's heading in um, really good directions. And um, I'm excited to see uh, 
that these kinds of tooling are being used and, and being uh, used in order to bring KiCad to a lot of different workflows where you know, previously you had to kind of adapt your workflow to KiCad and uh, I think the direction we're going is uh, making KiCad more flexible so that you can adapt KiCad to your workflow and I think this is really good, especially for um, larger uh, teams, organizations, businesses, things like that. With that, uh, I'll take questions now on database libraries, but you can also find my contact info here um, in case anyone wants to contact me uh, after this. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're here in the room, um, you can just grab me, but uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, feel free to reach out if you have questions about uh, database libraries or anything else like that. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff. So do you have questions or are you simply overwhelmed? Yeah. Hiya. Um, so once you've got this all set up and say you share your design with someone but they don't, they've just got a fresh install of KiCad, how does it fall back or how does it appear? Are the symbols and footprints still available? Good question. So like with any type of KiCad library, uh, in modern versions of KiCad, uh, you do not need access to the original libraries that were used to create a design to open and edit that design because all of the symbols and footprints are stored in the schematic and the board. So if you just need to open and view and make small changes to the design, uh, you don't need to do anything else. If you want to transfer that library, uh, you have a couple of options. One is you can just give them access to the library, depending on what your relationship with them is. But if you don't want to do that, um, you know what you can do, whether or not uh, someone is explicitly uh, you know, trying to give you a way to access symbols as a library, you can just open up any KiCad schematic and export all of the symbols used in that schematic to a new library. Um, so if you, if you find someone's design that's open source that you're like, uh, this design is cool, I want these parts as a library, uh, you can do that one by one. I mean, you can sort of open up a symbol and then save it, but you don't have to do that. You can just grab every symbol in one go, export that to a library, and add that to your library configuration. Uh, thanks. Um, one slight follow-up. So for the attributes, does that mean, say you open the design up, you can't you can no longer just change, say, a 10K resistor to a 12K or something, just a minor. Everything is still freely editable. So you can, you can open up a specific one and change it. Uh, but then if you do an update symbols from library or compare to library, it will show that change and it'll, it'll overwrite it with whatever is in the database once, once you do that update. But you can still hand edit anything you want on the schematic. It's just uh, sort of at your own risk whether you want to do that or not. So, and there's an ERC check for that, if you change the... Yes, library. yes. Yeah. There's so you will, you will be told about it. If you've changed it and you're at risk of overwriting, it will stop you, or at least it will tell you before it does it. Sorry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions. Oh, wait. No. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> Just as I turn away. You keep me busy. That's Sorry. fine. Good for my head. You look too relaxed. Um, are, there, are there implications for the libraries, the KiCad libraries themselves, for um, standard fields or default fields, maybe for certain component types? Uh, do, I, do I understand the question correctly? You're asking if the, uh, any of this will apply to the standard libraries? I mean, are there implications for the, the implications? Libraries? Yeah. Uh, no. So the way that the database libraries work with existing symbol libraries is that whatever data is present in the existing symbol library is is carried over unless you configure it to be overridden from the database. So if your standard library has uh, some description. Uh, you can just not configure it in the database and that will be used, or you can configure it and it will overwrite it with uh, whatever is in the database. You can also use that too if your standard library has a field shown, you can, you can hide it with the database version and things like this. I was, I was thinking more of um, you know, resistant um, for, uh, for transistors maybe for um, voltage. 
That's yeah, this is, the same applies to any kind of field. So uh, you can you can take uh, parameters from the existing libraries if you want, or you can overwrite them. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, ECADA, uh, the pro version, the new version is using SQLite for, for, for the database, library database. So I want to map from this to, to, to reuse the libraries. So how to uh, take the, 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 the data from different tables. In, okay, and I can create another one, another relationship to to integrate the footprint for the compatibility. So less work for me for the integration. Uh, do, 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 in case you have, I have a, a table with the ID of another table for the footprint name, so you have different relationship. You have different, uh, you have data from multiple tables? Yes. Right now, the way to do that is with a SQL view. So the, the question, if I understand correctly, is, uh, if you have uh, data in multiple tables that you need to pull together into one symbol. Um, so KiCad doesn't support configuring that inside the config file because there is this uh, feature called a view in, in this kind of database where you basically create a virtual table that uh, joins together multiple tables and you can select some columns from table A, some columns from table B, and present that view as if it's a new table without actually creating a new table. Um, so there are some examples on the forum you can find of people doing this, where you just uh, configure KiCad to look at this view instead of looking at the underlying table, and it will have all the information it needs. Easy EDA importer? What's the question? So the, the question was, uh, was about how to do this for Easy EDA specifically uh, with their SQLite, uh, with their SQLite database and um, the importer, the Easy EDA importer. Now, if you just want to go one direction, want to take your Easy EDA library and bring it into KiCad, you just import it directly. So, um, so if you if you want to work with it in Easy EDA and make changes and have that reflected in KiCad and you know John's uh, John's database library le lets you do all that sort of mixing and matching, but if you just if you have an Easy EDA library you want to use it in KiCad just pull it in directly KiCad will read the Easy EDA, EDA format natively. Uh, is there a way from the SQL site to actually access the fields that are in the KiCad library? So can I like parametrically generate a bunch of parts using the fields that they already have and populate database fields from there from the database? I don't believe you would be able to do that just with a database itself, like a SQLite or, or Postgres, but I think this is something that you could build as a third-party application. Um, so this is uh, some of the things that I see users starting to work on, like this uh, Key 365 project I saw, and like some of the projects that are, would make use of the REST API that's being proposed, is uh, you know, more advanced use cases of uh, dynamically generating libraries and things like this. Anyone? Yeah, okay. Just curious if we have, we collectively, you know, <laughs> if we have some method of teaching people how to do this, like a tutorial, maybe there's too many caveats to cover them all, but just a general. It's a good it question. Um, I, I think that we can always use more tutorial content for KiCad advanced topics like this. Um, you know, part of what I wanted to do with this talk was create another uh, piece of content that will will live on and, and maybe give people a starting point. Uh, there is documentation for this in the user manual, but it is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. I have seen some users create step-by-step -step tutorials for their specific implementation on one operating system. Uh, some of those are either as forum threads on the forum or are linked to. Uh, like I, I think there's at least one user who did one on their blog and linked to it. Um, that said, I think this is an area where uh, we could definitely use more kind of tutorial content. 
Um, and I would love to speak with anybody who is uh, implementing this, has what they feel like is a good setup, um, but maybe doesn't have the uh, the time or energy or to do like the sort of the technical writing portion of turning that into a tutorial. Um, we would be happy to uh, connect you with volunteers to sort of do the, the writing work and polish it and, and turn it into a nice resource for the community. Okay, and then a quick follow up to that, because I'm no data database expert by any means, is there specific f formats like CSV or, you know, I heard SQLite, just I know nothing about it. I just heard it over and over. Um, but things like that, is there specific desirable formats that it can access? So right now, um, the, 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 the KiCad function can connect to anything that ODBC can connect to. So most of these that I'm aware of are some sort of SQL database. And there are different dialects of SQL and, and different feature sets and things like this. Um, there are non-SQL things that do uh, support ODBC. I haven't personally tested them, but they should work. Um, and CSV is more of like a, a interchange format for like moving data around. I don't think it would be a good idea to directly read a CSV file and use it as a live database. Um, but there are certainly, you could, if you had a CSV of a bunch of data, you could import that into a, um, a SQL database or a different type of database. That's how I created the, uh, the QA database, is I used a tool to import from a CSV. Is this for this question or a new one? Uh, so we are number two, we are number two for me. Um, when I got, got aboard uh, KiCad many years ago, this feature was not here, so I'm, I appreciate a lot that it's now uh, getting on board. And, uh, I think it's also something that many commercial users will, you know, see forward to because, you know, if you're in a commercial environment, you need something like this. And um, but that many years ago, I kind of, you know, did what I had to do and externally created some sort of database or spreadsheets and stuff like that to to kind of manage my, you know, parametrics about components that wasn't intrinsic to to the libraries in uh, in KiCad. And now I have like, you know, several thousand components in those externally managed uh, systems and libraries and stuff. Do you see now is the time, or do you think that it will be hard to migrate back to a, a database system? Which I kind of, you know, I want to go there, because right now it's still a hassle to manage something externally and something in the libraries and, and so on. Do you think that it will be easy to, you know, migrate back, as in taking what I have, data in those libraries and externally and put it into a database system that you're suggesting now? Or would you say, hmm, we might look into making some specific features for, you know, going into that direction. So if your information today is stored in uh, spreadsheet type uh, files, um, I, I think that we might have features for like one time import from spreadsheet. Um, we, we can already, you can paste in data into some of the grids right now if it's uh, in certain format. Um, and we might, we might make it easier to do like a one time import from a spreadsheet as an action. I, I'm not aware of any talk about a roadmap for like a, a consistent synchronization of data with a spreadsheet. So if you want this kind of dynamic, consistent uh, synchronization, I would think about uh, either playing with the database libraries feature, or uh, you know, if you if you don't want to deal with a database, if you think a database isn't the right tool for you, um, then watch what's going on with the REST API um, proposal and. This one might take a while to turn into an end-use tool. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure because uh, the, the feature has to land in KiCad, and then people have to build the third-party tooling around it, like the, uh, the web server that actually provides some kind of part management functionality. I know people are working on that. I know there are some sort of personal projects that are on the side uh, working on that. Um, so this, this, I think, could be an alternative, maybe as soon as next year. Um, but I would say, um, you know, everybody needs to try their own way. My recommendation for you would be to try it. Uh, it's pretty quick and easy to migrate a spreadsheet into a database and, and just try it and see what it's like. And then if you, if you don't like it, it's also pretty easy to export a database to a spreadsheet. I haven't, I haven't tried it. I think this, I know Excel and access and things, uh, yeah, I, they, I'm not sure how cross-platform it is, but uh, it, it does exist. Uh, we are working in a Visual Studio Code extension for the search of 
libraries component. Um, also, to work for the cross reference is like to to make to looking for reemplacement or stock or supply chain, whatever. So we have several databases. We contact the provider of the API of the databases. Sometimes of the library, sometimes they didn't reply, so we hack and we download everything. And then we have several resources. So we are building for the community this kind of Visual Studio Code extension because have very nice performance for with TypeScript. So which one is the best approach of the best way to make reactive connection between this extension to KiCad? It's mm -hmm. like, okay, this is to use these este, resources or maybe wait for the REST API. This is my question. I think if you already have some kind of application that is, uh, you know, some piece of software that is going and collecting information from a variety of vendors, um, probably the REST API is an easier way um, to, to do that. Uh, but if you wanted to implement it today, I, I think you can do it with either. You would just need your application to uh, either populate the data into a database that KiCad then connects to, or if you, if you don't already have such a database that is accessible, um, you would have to create one and then fill it. But uh, the database library feature does require some kind of direct connection to a database. Um, so ODBC, you need some way of reaching the database. So it either needs to be on a local machine or it needs to be on a server that is reachable. Um, this is not a good choice for any kind of system where you want to have it exposed on the public internet. Um, so if you want to like make some service where you have a, you know, a login and then you can connect KiCad and, and then get, uh, get part info um, via the public internet, I think the REST API is the, is the way to go. Yes. But we have everything offline, mm -hmm. and we want just to make like reactive. Well, oh, we are looking for another component because the exchange there is no stock. But the way to inject in real time the new component in, on KiCad, on KiCad. So it mm -hmm. is the rest or it, this con ODBC connection. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so I think you could do it today with ODBC, but it wouldn't be truly real time because you would need to be uh, generating data and then KiCad would read that data. So there would be some kind of lag. What, what the REST API will allow you to do is uh, to basically respond to a query from KiCad by running code. And that code could do anything. So at that point, you could pull in uh, your, your data from different data sources and things like that. Uh, if you use the database libraries, you can still accomplish that. Um, but basically, your your code has to fill a database, and then KiCad reads from that database. So there is that little bit of uh, extra extra hop there to do. I mean, you could do the same thing by writing your own. You could do the same thing by writing your own ODBC driver. I suppose that is true. <laughs> so if you want to talk to Jeff about his consulting rates, uh, <laughs> he'll probably get it done in uh, three weeks. <laughs> Are we uh, are we for, at time? Yes. Uh, we can do we can do one more question and then and then I think it's coffee time. Yeah, that's good. Oh, thank you. Oh, I have an open question. I'm not a database expert by any means. Uh, is there a possibility to use a, a, a type of database like Redis, which is a, you know. A, a type of a key value database uh, in terms of, uh, maybe for performance. And uh, I just don't know how to put it, but it's a really, really very open question. Yeah, uh, good question. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I would say uh, if, it, if there already exists uh, an ODBC connector and there is a way of uh, creating a schema that, that KiCad can talk to, then it should work. So it might be possible to intercommunicate both types of databases? Well, nah. Yeah, give it a try. Let me know if it works or it doesn't. All right. <laughs> thank you. Alrighty, thank you everyone. <laughs>